Hi, my name's Kate Graham. I'm a speech language pathologist with the Western PA ALS Association. And today I'm going to talk with you about electronic aids to assist with daily living. Specifically, we're going to talk about smart home technology to allow people with physical limitations to participate in everyday activities. Much of what we'll talk about today is available in the Western PA ALS Smart Lab. This Smart Lab um, is a nice place because it allows people to come in and see this equipment actually set up and to see how it interacts. So hopefully you'll be able to take advantage and see some of this um, in person whenever we're allowed to meet, when we're able to meet face-to-face -face again. Um, in addition, a lot of this technology is available in the loan closet. So just some broad statements about smart home devices. Today we're going to be talking about those consumer available smart home devices that we hope can improve the quality of life, reduce energy expenditure, and increase independence. They can also help save on heating and energy costs. These smart home devices have the ability to create sequences and routines to integrate functions. So for example, you might create a routine that whatever you say, Alexa or hey Google, good morning, your um, lights turn on, your smart plug turns on, and your voice assistant tells you the weather for the day. Um, and again, those can all be customized, but it can be a way to integrate the functions in an easy way rather than yelling all of these different commands. Um, smart home devices can be controlled in different ways, and we'll talk about this a little bit more um, in a video that we'll see later uh, via app, often uh, with a, your voice or with a speech device or through a computer often. I also want to note that obviously what we'll talk about today is not an all-inclusive list. There are smart home brands that are constantly growing and growing with new devices and new capabilities. Um, not a note I wanted to make is that not all are as reliable as they claim. So it is important to read the reviews to think about what it is that you want to accomplish and kind of read the pros and cons of, of different manufacturers uh, for each device. And I'm happy to assist with that as well. Later, we'll hear some information from Stephen Kaminos. Um, he is a person living with ALS who has been a wealth of knowledge in this um, entire endeavor in learning about this smart home technology and how it can work well and actually implementing it in someone's home. Um, so Stephen, in talking with Stephen recently, he really said something that I thought was important to, to create a whole slide on, which was the, the importance of a strong, stable internet connection for the smart home technology. Um, if you don't have that, or if you do and you really want to make sure that you have that stable inter internet connection, you may want to consider a mesh network. And what that does is it, if you think about mesh, it's really just going to spread your Wi-Fi network out through multiple access points. So that can be helpful to fix dead zones or just to expand your Wi-Fi coverage. There are two ways to set it up, and I have to admit that I have not done either of these two ways. Um, but one way is if your existing router is mesh compatible, which from my understanding, many current routers are, you can buy compatible routers or repeaters to create a, a mesh network. Um, this can save money without needing to purchase a new system. If you're looking for something that is a bit more easy to install on your own, if you're looking for something, if you need a router upgrade, upgrade um, purchasing a new mesh router. So two products that just recently came available um, are the Google Nest Wi-Fi and the Amazon Eero. Um, those include everything you need to create this mesh network and also have um, those multiple access points. So I want to talk a little bit about voice activated environmental controls. And um, I have a video that I shot. Unfortunately, I want to apologize for the quality. It's pretty blurry. I was um, shooting on my own and I couldn't really tell the quality as I was filming. Um, and interestingly enough, I filmed the video last week and 
between last week and now, um, Amazon came out with different, different products for their Alexa devices. So technology is constantly changing. So quickly, um, we'll, I'll talk about this further in the video, but we're talking about Amazon um, Echo Alexa devices. And again, like I, men I mentioned, those were just recently redesigned and now include the Amazon Echo, the Dot, the Dot Kids, and the Show 10. The Amazon Alexa generally works with the most smart home devices. So that's what we use a lot in the ALS Association loan closet and in the smart lab. It also has the most third party skills that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, Google Home and Google Assistant is another option. This is the one where you would say, hey, Google to. Um, of note, Google can do some things that Alexa cannot, light control Comcast, Chrome, Chromecast TVs. So important to think about what technology you have and what is important that you're able to control. Um, there's also the Apple HomeKit that uses Siri. And now we'll just look at a brief video of showing some of these um, being used in the smart home, the smart lab with some of the different capabilities. There are several different kinds of voice assistants. Um, Google makes a voice assistant, um, Amazon, Siri, these are all examples of different voice assistants. Um, here in the Western PA ALS Smart Lab, we have Amazon products. So, um, you know, at first, actually, I want to raise this table up so hopefully you can see these products a bit more. And this is actually a, another nice piece of equipment. This is a table from Ikea, and it is, the height is adjustable. So there's a little lever over here where I can raise the table up and stop it, and it does um, lower as well. Um, yeah, so that was just a consumer. IKEA purchase. And what's interesting is, you know, a lot of what we'll look at today is just consumer electronics, but used in a different way, which can really help um, to promote independence for people living with ALS. So as I mentioned, we're going to focus today um, looking at some of the Amazon Alexa products. So what I have here, and I'm going to try to avoid saying her name so she doesn't always go off all the time, but what we have here is an Echo Show 5. So the 5 means it's a 5-inch screen. They do make um, Echo Shows with larger screens, which can, which can be nice depending on what you're looking to use it for. Um, we also have an Amazon Echo Dot. So this is the smaller one that almost looks like a hockey, hockey puck. Um, there are several different Echo devices um, in the line, some that are um, have better quality speakers, some that have a built-in hub, they vary in price, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for, but that's definitely something that um, we can assist with here at the chapter to decide what might work best for you. So the setup for the Amazon voice assistants um, are fairly easy. It involves downloading the Amazon Alexa app on a tablet, um, a smart device, a smartphone, and it really does guide you through the steps for setup. Again, that's something that we can assist with. Um, but now that I have the device set up, I have it connected to the Wi-Fi, I can ask her some various things like, um, Alexa, what's the weather? Currently, in Butler, it's 67 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today, you can expect mostly sunny weather, with a high of 76 degrees and a low of 52 degrees. Have a good afternoon. Sure, I'm going to try to see what my cord permits me to bring towards the camera here, but I'll show you another um, screenshot of this device. I know you can't see with the screen, but what's nice about if I do have one with the screen is it gives me the forecast here. So it's showing me an hourly forecast on the screen, and there are some other nice capabilities if you're looking for a screen versus something um, like an Echo Dot or an Echo Plus. Um, additionally, if I would have a hard time using my voice or if I would have a hard time being understood by some of the voice assistants, I can also use a speech generating device. So this is a PRC accent, um, or I could use a text to speech app on a tablet. But with that, I could, I'll demonstrate a few other things that she can do. So I have a few phrases programmed in here. So I might say, Alexa. Play the Beatles. Here's a station based on the Beatles. Or I might say something like, Relaxing. 
volume down. Do, do, I, oh, he, rock, oh, he, roll, or I could, if I was done listening to music, to his knee. Go to the stop. So that was just playing through uh, free Amazon Music, which will give me, um, for example, in that example I asked it to play the Beatles, so she did give me a Beatles song here. My next song might not be by the Beatles, but it will be by someone similar in genre to the Beatles. Again, that's just using the free Amazon Music service. You can, there's a free 30-day trial, I believe, of the service in which then you can ask it to play any song, any artist that you would like. You can also connect this with if you would have a Pandora or a Spotify or an Apple Music account. So we can connect those different music providers with your Amazon device as well to have that interact. Um, other nice things that there's thousands of things that this device can do. Um, another nice feature, especially for people living with ALS, is having it work as a drop-in intercom system. So if you have a few devices, even two devices of this in your home, so maybe you have an Echo Show um, in the kitchen, and maybe there is an Echo Dot, the smaller um, hockey puck one, maybe that's downstairs in the basement. So now if I'm downstairs in the basement and I need to get someone upstairs, I can ask, I can say, Alexa, drop in to kitchen, or whatever I've named it, and then that acts as a two-way intercom for me to talk back and forth. I couldn't find that name. Do you want to drop in on office? No. There are no other devices or contacts to drop in on. Alexa. If you are trying to reach your kid, stop. So we do have it set up so that the dot is in the office, but I don't want to drop in and disturb anyone in the office right now. Um, but you can, that's something that we can assist with to get set up in the home so that you can have that intercom system and easily talk to people in different parts of your home. So that video showed some of the things Alexa can do. Um, some other things to mention would include setting an alarm or reminder, adding items to a list, um, calling or text messaging, reporting the news, games like Jeopardy, 20 questions, much, much more. If you look at the different Alexa skills, you can search by category, by interest. There are thousands upon thousands of different skills that Alexa can do. Something important that Alexa cannot do though is Alexa cannot call emergency numbers. So it cannot directly call 911. It can make calls to those um, that are in your contacts and phone numbers as well if they're not in your contacts, but it cannot call 911 directly. There are some ways around this using external hardware, such as an Amazon Echo Connect, which is no longer manufactured, but you can still sometimes find them on eBay or an Alexa skill like Ask My Buddy or My SOS Family. But these skills, again, don't directly call 911. So that's an important thing to remember, something that Alexa cannot do among all these things that it can do. Really great for us. Okay, we're gonna watch another video in the Smart Lab talking about smart lights and smart plugs for appliances. Here in the Tech Lab, we use Philips Hue smart light bulbs. They are very easy to connect, particularly if you have an Echo Plus that has the built-in hub that's needed to work with these light bulbs. If not, it's easy enough to get um, the Connect Bridge, which comes in this starter kit, to act as a hub to talk between your voice assistant and your smart light. So now that I have my smart light bulb set up, I can say things like, Alexa, turn on the light. Okay. And again, I can use my speech device or a text-to-speech app to also interact with it. So I can say further things like, Alexa, dim the light. Okay. Or I could even say, Alexa, dim the light to 25%. Okay. Alexa, turn the light off. Okay. So that's using the smart light bulbs. In addition, there are smart plugs. So these are some smart Wi-Fi plugs that the chapter uses. So I could use a smart plug and um, connect that to my Wi-Fi and then have that um, work for a plug-in lamp, 
um, a fan, um, anything like that with a plug. So those are just two examples of the smart lighting that we use here at the, the tech lab. TV and entertainment control can be accomplished a few different ways. Many speech generating devices have the ability to learn infrared commands and then can then control TV and entertainment systems. They do only have the capability to learn infrared commands. Many um, remotes and current cable boxes will use RF or radio frequency. There are ways around this, um, like getting a universal remote with IR commands, um, but that is one route to take. Another is to investigate if your cable company might have an app or computer controller access or access via Alexa skills, which would then allow you to have voice control. Um, finally, something that we use often um, at the Smart Lab and in the loan closet for people living with ALS is the Logitech Harmony Smart Control. So I'm gonna show you a video demonstrating some of that in the Smart Lab. Something that we use in the tech lab for TV control is the um, Harmony Companion Logitech remote. So with this comes a hub that allows Alexa to speak with the TV. There are limited capabilities hmm. that I can use. I didn't find that. To browse other movies oh, and TV shows, talking. just ask Alexa, to stop. Video home. To, um, there are a limited amount of things that I can do with TV control as far as voice commands go. Um, using the, the Harmony Hub, I can do things like power the TV on and off, adjust the volume, change the channel, but doing things like accessing the guide or um, paging through Netflix, that's something that, that you are not able to do yet with that Harmony Hub um, through voice control. You can, however, do it through the uh, corresponding app. So I just wanna, um, I'll show you the app once we get the TV running. In addition, I just kind of wanted to touch on too that there are different ways of TV control. So often through your um, cable provider, they might have different skills that work, will work with your voice assistant to allow you to operate your TV. But just to show you a few things that you can do with the Harmony Hub through voice control. Alexa. Turn the TV on. Okay. So now if this would have gone to um, cable, which we don't have cable here in the, the lab, but if it would have gone to cable, I could ask her to, to change the channel. Um, I can do the volume, so I can say, Alexa, turn the TV volume up. Okay. Now, if I wanted to navigate this page, this is when I could go to my app. So if I go here, I apologize for the glare. Let me get us situated fairly well. So if I go here and if I go into my Harmony app, now you can see I have all of the commands just like what I would on a TV remote. So I could use these arrows and just to kind of show you up at the top here I could use these two to flip through and to choose what it is that I wanted. Smart thermostats allow you to create schedules for heating and air conditioning and control them remotely via an app. Um, a few examples include Nest, Echo Bee, and Honeywell. Echo Bee is one in my research that I found is compatible with many other smart home devices and is often one that's preferred if you look at consumer lists because it allows you to put remote sensors in different locations to get an accurate read of the temperature. So you can make sure that the temperature is 72 degrees in your bedroom upstairs and in the um, living room downstairs. The newest version of the Echo B, which I believe is the Echo B5, also has Alexa built in. Um, previous versions did as well, but the newest version has a better speaker. So it can be used a little bit more for doing things like playing music, doing the drop-in, doing things that we showed earlier with what you can do with Alexa. Um, many smart thermostats do also require a dedicated C or a common wire. So that's something to think about with installation.
I'm going to show you a video from the Tech Lab talking about video doorbells and security cameras. I wanted to note something that I learned after shooting the video is that the Nest cameras that are mentioned in the video can also recognize faces and they can also announce who's coming to the door. So that was an added additional feature that I thought was kind of neat. So I want to show you some of the smart cameras that we use here in the Tech Lab. Um, we have a Ring Video Doorbell 2 installed outside. In addition, here we have a Ring camera that can be, the cord's a little bit short where I have it plugged in right now, but it can be, this um, joint is adjustable, so it can be mounted on the ceiling, mounted on a wall, and you can move this to get different angles. And then I have a Nest, Nest Cam indoor. So this Nest Cam works really well with Google Voice Assistance. Um, I'll show you how we can kind of see the views with all of these. There's different ways to do it. Um, so for the sake of today, I'm going to place this ring camera, and I'm going to have it point back here. I have a Clorox bottle back here that I thought was pretty, pretty timely, so we'll have that camera give us a shot of that when we take a look at it. So I can see the views from my camera using a few different things. So I can either do it from an app on my... Um, my tablet, my smartphone, I can do it. I can see it from the screen of my Echo Show. Um, I could do it on a computer if I had a computer. With that being said, too, if I had a speech device, that um, speech devices, they often have a computer side of the device as well. So if I have access to that computer side, which is running like a Windows um, operating system, as long as it's running Windows 10 or higher, I could also have the view right here on my speech device. So now that I have my camera set up, I can say, to pull it up on my Echo Show, I could say, Alexa, show me the Tech Lab door. Mm. Alexa, show me Tech Lab door. Are you trying to shop for Tech Labrador? <laughs> no. All right. Alexa, show me the door. Okay. So as you can see, you need to play around with your, your wording. <laughs> she can understand you, um, that you might be asking for some different things. But now, I don't know if you can see, but I have a live view outside of the door here. Um, in addition, I can turn right now the microphone's on, so I'm going to turn it off. But I could um, speak with someone. So if there was someone outside the door, I could converse with them. Um, I can say, Alexa, stop. To end that view. I can also, like I said, look at that, the app um, from within my iPad. So I know this is difficult to see, but I can go to the Ring app and here will show me all of the, the cameras that I currently have. So here's the Smart Lab door. Here's our other camera that we're going to take a look at, just called Cam. So I can go, I can always go here and ask for a live view. And here this is giving me a live view of our Clorox container there. And again, using this, um, I can speak through this camera as well. So I could touch this to speak. I could talk with that person. That person who's in the room with the camera could speak back with me. And I could end it whenever I was completed. Um, in addition, these cameras can have um, motion settings. So you can have it set up so if at your doorbell, if you'd like to know when there's motion at a certain distance, or even with these cameras, if you want to know that there is motion in the room, it can send you alerts about that as well. Um, and just one more time to show you with the Echo Show, I can say, um, Alexa, show me Smart Lab Cam. Okay. And it should show us our Clorox bottle. Yep. It gives us our Clorox bottle. Alexa, stop. And we get a lot of feedback because we have the devices all so close together. Um, the Nest camera, I'm not able to pull that up directly here on the Echo Show. But that is something that if I had a, for example, a Google Home device, that I would be able to see a live feed on that. Um, and just like with the Ring, 
I have a Nest app that I can go into and I can see a live view of that camera here too. And in addition with that, I can as well um, speak back and forth like I can with the ring cameras too. Smart locks can be used to control and monitor your lock and your door from anywhere. You can also give access to friends and family. There are systems that replace the deadbolt, like the Schlage Connect, and there are systems that um, add on to the existing deadbolt, and that allows you to keep your current keys. Uh, one that we use often here at the ALS Association is the August, and the newest version has Wi-Fi built in, so there's no need for a connect bridge, which is something that you previously needed. It has easy installation, and it also has a feature called door sense that will tell you if your door is left open. It's compatible with many smart home systems. So with Alexa, with Google, uh, this photo here shows the August smart lock connected to that existing deadbolt. Sesame is another manufacturer that makes another add-on system. This one I have to give Stephen credit to as well. He recently found a garage door opener and this is relatively low cost. I wanna say it's around um, maybe $35, but it's called the Chamberlain MyQ and it includes a sensor for a garage door and a hub that connects to your Wi-Fi. The MyQ app lets you check to see if your door is open and it allows you to open and close it remotely. Um, so this might be another way to grant access to someone without using a smart lock. This might be a more uh, low cost solution that, that might work for you. One drawback is it does not currently work with Alexa. So you cannot do this with voice control, but you are able to do it through the app. There are also many smart smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. The one that I found that has um, higher reviews is the Nest Protect Smoke Smart, smart Smoke Carbon Monoxide Detector. Um, a nice feature with that one is that can, you can use it with a routine to automatically turn on lights to make it easier to get out of your home. And that's if it's used with a Google Assistant, not with an Alexa device. A lot of those Nest capabilities, remember, will work a little bit better with Google, Google devices. With all of these smart home devices, sometimes as you gain more, you have a need to connect and to automate these smart home devices together. A hub can be a central system that can integrate and control your smart home devices. One that gets good reviews and one that I know Stephen has used and recommended is the Samsung SmartThings Hub. This has Wi-Fi built in, works with a wide range of devices, has both Zigbee and Z-Wave, so it pairs with many smart home devices, and it uses a companion app to arrange scenes and autom automations. This is called an OB device and it's used for feeding. Um, it has a tray with um, places for four different types of food, four different things. So I can put that tray in there. Oops. And I went ahead and already taught the device. So I taught the device based on where I was standing, where I wanted that bite to take place. So it can be modified for people of different sizes and different seating positions. Um, I have these two switches that are going to operate the arm. The black switch, this will be hard to see, but the black switch will move um, to what, which of those four dishes I'd like to choose from first. So I'm going to go from this one in the back. And now the red switch, whenever I depress it, will go ahead and get that bite for me. And I could use this switch, you know, with my hand like I'm doing now. I could use it at my foot. I could use it mounted at my elbow or at my chin. Lots of different types of switches and different pressure that's needed. So now I have that bite. And if I were positioned where I taught it, um, oops, and I by accident hit the, the black button. So it's going down to get me another bite. Um, but I'll bring that up again. So I hit the red button, letting it know that I wanted a bite. It will bring it up to my mouth. 
So now I could take that bite, and once I've cleared that bite, I can hit that red switch again, and it'll bring it back down for another bite. So it can really help with independence when, with feeding. I want to encourage you, if you're interested in any of these products or interested in looking more into smart home devices, to check out Amazon Prime Day. So that's coming up October 13th and 14th, but already they've begun early Prime Day deals. So check out Amazon, see what's available. If you see something in an early Prime deal, I would suggest you get it because it doesn't mean that it'll be available again on Prime Day and might only be available for a limited time. So that's something to check out. I also have my contact information here. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I certainly don't know everything about all this technology, but I uh, will do my best to assist you and to consult with colleagues as needed and kind of weed through the reviews and, and make things that will work for you, hopefully. So again, I hope you um, enjoyed this presentation. I hope it gave you some new ideas and please don't hesitate to contact me if I can be of any help.